Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wishing you a happy morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. To everyone out there in the world in crypto, in good old cryptocurrency land, whether you're coming back from a late night in uh, Northern America, dancing on all sorts of tables, having all sorts of bottles of dirty water, or you're waking up for a nice morning cup of joe with me over here in Europe. Anyways, good live scene as Bitcoin has done. Well, very little. We've been doing the last. We've been doing the same thing for the for about the last week and a half. If you haven't noticed already, uh, but with the higher time frames right over here, you know, as always. Lower lows, lower highs, still in a downtrend, uh, but starting to round it up right over here. So yesterday, it was a concern of mine that uh, Bitcoin had closed the last daily. This guy right over here, below the 21 and below the 10 simple moon average. And as you can see, when you're in consolidation, it's hard to make like a full on play. Uh, yesterday, closing back above that area once again and actually taking out the high of that on that current dildo right over here. Now, here's the thing, though, you know, just with that going on in this action right over here, that does not mean that you know you immediately get bullish the pattern to be played is on the lower time frame so to really you know dig this guy out we got to go over here to our uh, bit mexican chart uh, go down to the four hour i think this one represents it pretty damn well and working on some sort of an ascending triangle right over here or whatever the crown of triangle you want to call it now typically speaking these are more bullishly resolved triangles uh and triangles are just great in general but when it comes down to it, I've seen every fucking every every pattern breakout, every goddamn which way that's not supposed to. I've seen failed breakouts, I've seen you know just fake breakouts, all all sorts of uh, all sorts of weird things. So overall, the key areas to be watching are this guy right here, thirty seven fifty to the downside, and above here, above the two hundred exponential, this purple moving average right over here, uh, thirty nine hundred. Whichever one can can close a four hour dildo above or below first, that's going to be our next direction. We've been working on this you know ever since the twenty eighth right over here, and even you know more appropriately all the all, all the way back now over here um so we've been kind of in this area for a long time there is an apex on uh coming up on the ninth it looks like but this thing does look like it wants to be resolved soon uh and the way that i'm getting that from is just looking at the volume catch resistance down around here you see volume have this very orderly drop off kind of a signature and at some point in time, it just gets so damn low that it gets ready, that it's just, you know, it's just it's just mature and she's ready. Uh, for myself, I'm completely cash. I believe I showed this yesterday night. I was short from 3,800 to this area right over here. Then I went cash uh, once we went to 3,750 um, or 37.80, something like that. Yeah, it looks like 37.85 on my streamer account. So yeah, my streamer account didn't get as good of a price as my main account, but that's why it's streamer account. Um, so yeah, I won't be I, I don't really see any reason to play support and resistance in this area right now just because when you do get so close to the actual apex of a triangle it just becomes more and more likely to break out so the next big play to make is probably going to be the breakout um to be clear i'm gonna i'm gonna guess that our four hour stokes are now pointed up yes indeed they are three hour is headed north as well so lower time frames uh both pointed north what about the eight hour yeah eight hours gonna be snaking around but still still technically pointing to the downside what about 10 hour 10 hours still going down as well and uh daily daily actually still headed south as well what about the what about like the two day yeah two day actually just crossed back to the upside and three day is still going up to the upside so a lot of indecision between these ones and that's exactly what you're going to get during a good consolidation phase there's not going to be too many clues within them right now and uh and and as it stands you know you can make the argument for both ways and that's why i always say price action first when we're looking for clues i want to make it extremely extremely abundantly clear that that is secondary to actual price action itself i mean just in general indicators are always derived from price action so they will in some in some sense be lagging and also so just by the nature of it there's nothing that you won't see on on uh, on this guy right over here that that won't be shown in an indicator um, because again they're all derived from it price volume and time anyways uh let's go over and see what our other guys say can we get any sort of clues uh, amongst any of these guys again two hour is complete consolidation uh rsi is just hanging between it's just it's just oscillating between essentially the the edge of the bullish control zone and the edge of the bearish control zone uh, maybe we can find some on the eight hour eight hour looks a little bit more like a bearish consolidation on the rsi but still you know not uh not I mean, it's not a death sense or anything like that. Again, price action first. Um, and uh, what about our DMI? DMI is not telling us anything. Uh, it's actually not been telling us anything for quite some time now. So again, you, yeah, I mean, you kind of guess that if you haven't had like a big move. Um, yeah, same thing over here with the 12 hours. So really not too much to be gained from these. Even the jewel is just literally smack dab in the middle of this guy right here. It's nothing. There is just complete neutrality, complete neutrality. Maybe everyone's just agreed that this is a good price for Bitcoin. Three thousand eight hundred and twenty-five and a half dollars. Uh, 
I think it sounds pretty good too. So you know what? I'm in. <laughs> no more trading. Okay, guys, you can stop trading now. Um, but uh, but anyways, going back down over to uh, perhaps the two hour. Uh, looks like we might be breaking this preliminary support right here. This is not an important one. Uh, anything anything that is not this area right here or this area right here is not important. And in fact, even to the downside, it does get a little bit tricky because if you do break this area right here, 37.50, yes, you will lose. And sorry, I want to say break it. I mean close like a two hour dildo below there you will lose the overall posturing of this potentially being a, a an ascending triangle um, and looking like it is going to break down to, to the downside but you still do have support right over here right around uh, 3680 and more importantly this guy right around here your former kind of spike low of this consolidation at the 618 so you know overall um i am bearish on bitcoin nothing's changed there higher time frames are all the same you know daily still making lower highs and lower lows weekly still closing below the uh, the 200 exponential and we're still below 6000 so overall you know i am in bear market mode um but but actually timing these sorts of things is is the real you know finesse factor of this uh, of this market right now so again um you're gonna hear a lot of people kind of making noise both ways whichever side wins out it's gonna be more of like okay you know so, uh, people are gonna be obnoxious about it right but it, at the end of the day this is consolidation in the truest sense of it um and pretty damn neutral on top of that so let's prepare for which for for both ways that this thing could put potentially break out and let's uh let's first do the more bullish one as that is it looks like it's looks like it's a little bit more close we do have three touches on both sides by the way so that is pretty good um yeah and it's in and uh mesh moves actually pointing you all the way to about 4150 this nice horizontal trend line coming in right around here maybe on the four hour this makes sense yeah yeah four hour makes sense right over there kind of your prior high from this uh spike to 4200 to sherry 4150 somewhere in this range which also would come in contact with and come in confluence with this overall ascending trend line right here which is extremely important to me because i do believe that there's going to be a massive massive play to be made um on bitcoin as i still do not believe that the short is in we can go over that a little bit later but if you want the full-on explanation either wait for tomorrow's uh long-term analysis video or check out my last long-term analysis video nothing's changed there it's all still applicable and um and it's and it's explained in great detail there but i'll just kind of gloss over it right now um but i i am looking for lower lows over time again that's going to be over time meaning probably months and months down the road um for the for uh for uh for the foreseeable future i believe that we're probably just going to be working between about three uh 3200 and you know low four thousands um so if bitcoin did rally up to this area right over here that would likely be a sell to me as again it would just be another lower high i do want to go uh gloss on over here to gbdc which is kind of doing exactly what i believe bitcoin is going to be doing and essentially just creating another descending triangle uh yesterday it did give a couple tries to break out of this guy um, um, but rejected on both tries. This is a nice long legged doji right here, and then a you know a basically another doji dildo right here as well. Again, I, you know I don't care what you call these guys; they are typically reversal style dildos. Um, perhaps best seen, maybe even better seen on it on a daily. Yeah, dailies. I mean, daily did close above the 21, so fair enough. That is good. Did we open above the 21? Um, yeah, did. So open and close above the 21. That is. That is pretty good, but it is also a reversal style dildo. So again, what do you put more weight on? It's I actually put more weight on exponentials, but still closing below. But then again, you know, closing below a resistance trend line um, in the form of a reversal style dildo. Well, then I say probably not. And again, more of the same. Again, when you've had a trend for the last over a year of lower highs and lower lows, aka a downtrend, I'm going to go with the former trend and tell it hold otherwise. So what could that look like on Bitcoin if we were to see that play out? And again, this is very bad technical analysis, what I'm about to do, but I this is this is my opinion. So to separate, to, so to separate my opinion from technical analysis, this is pretty much what I'm thinking um you know in the coming uh in the coming months or, or so or whatever it might be or is it could, it, could we be doing something like this mm, or already already there that would be interesting that would say that this is the top of it but i would be a little more lenient with it although that area is is of interest to be fair uh, but i'd be a little bit more lenient with it um if bitcoin were to actually you know hit up to that four thousand level where would that well well where would that be hitting just the upper resistance of this potential of this potential descending triangle so there's going to be a few areas of interest if bitcoin actually were to break out to the upside because you know 
one thing leads to the other, right? So let me actually talk about the bullish scenario. Uh, let's actually extrapolate the bullish scenario for just a second over here. So again, going back to our BitMexican chart right over here, uh, let's make the assumption that this thing does break out uh, up over here and actually does close above this area right over here. And what would that, do? I mean, again, this would be pointing up to about 4,100, 4,150, something like that. Um, so that would likely have carryover. And do, do, the, do the bulls have something to look at over here? Well, yes, they, they certainly do actually. In fact, this is, while I don't believe that this is an inverted head and shoulders, the volume characters, the volume characters are wrong, the neckline's wrong, the, I mean, the shape is wrong. You don't, you, you literally, you quite literally don't even have it in um, as of the current moment. Um, but it is a descending broadening wedge, which I know it's like just putting up my fucking finger and saying like, um, excuse me, it's actually not, okay? I've been reading Investopedia and <laughs> I've done my research and you know what? It won't be one. So... You know, you, you, you could make the argument that this is a, that this is a descending broadening wedge. And I would agree with that, actually. And so if Bitcoin were to resolve its smaller consolidation to the upside, it could have follow through and could have carry over if you want to represent the more bullish case, uh, the bullish scenario of this in resolving this guy to the upside. But again, as always, I hate I do not play bullish patterns in a bearish market um, because a lot of the times, even if you do break it out to the upside, you the the, the breakout will fail just like you did. Right. Or, I mean, just like you did on the run to like 8,000 uh, last year, which we can look at right now. Um, but basically another another kind of similar thing, right? Where you had, uh, you basically had this guy coming in back back over here. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And you were working on something like that. And you had a, you had a, a falling wedge. Everyone was talking about the falling wedge, right? Remember that? Uh, you break it out over here. But again, no volume on the breakout. And boom, down. And then what happens after that? Actually, pretty swift move down. Actually, going to front all the way from about 8,300 to 6,000 low uh, in a split second. Well, not a split second, but a couple of weeks. Anyways, um you know, so, so that's my kind of point. The next couple of resistances would be of great importance. So this guy right over here would have a chance to stop at 42.50. Um, as long as you're below 42.50, I see absolutely no reason at all to even consider that the low is in. Um, and uh, and above, uh, and then you got this guy right over here, 45.50. And then after that, well, then I don't see anything stopping you all the way from your from your full on measure move to about 40, I think this is about 4,900 even. So again, um, you know, even with all this, I do not, I still do not see five, thousand um in, unless if, if bitcoin gets back above five thousand i think that i think i think i'm gonna have to change you know my overall view on it um something different something new would have to be happening anyways that's a more bullish view of it that and those are the pitfalls that i can see with it again i don't believe that the lows and we'll go over that just a little bit later but if you want the full on the full like no bars hold the, the unedited version of it go check out the long-term analysis playlist as that goes in much more detail anyway so back now over here let's go talk about the more bearish uh, scenario of this we kind of already glossed over it um, with the descending triangle, uh, looking at that on GBTC, which again has been a great leading indicator for Bitcoin for the past year. And, you know, until until it tells us otherwise, I'm kind of I'm going to still go with it. So I do believe that this probably does get resolved to the downside. The measure move would be pointing you all the way down to about 3450 ish area that doesn't match up with any fibs over here, uh, interestingly enough. But but just by the nature of getting back down around here, destroying this what would be your proverbial right shoulder for all the inverted head and shoulders Quasimodo motherfuckers. Well, that would really destroy a lot of Moon Boy hopes because again, it's it's not even a fucking inverted head and shoulders to begin with. Neckline's wrong, falling is wrong, shapes wrong. You don't even have it in to begin with. It's it's there's so many things wrong with it, and it just shows that pattern traders don't even know what the fuck they're doing. I mean, of course, you can't speak on behalf of everyone. I totally understand that. A very, 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 very ignorant what I'm saying right now. But what I mean to say is that if you are going to be a pattern trader, you don't trade a pattern until you get full on confirmation of it. At least that's the way that I've seen it done in a more professional sense, in a more successful sense, so to speak. So for the people who just want to see like fucking cup and handles and falling wedges and flags and whatever fucking bullshit, insert bullshit here, that's great. But at least wait for it to be put in. Um, you know, I, I don't really like trading pounds myself. Uh, I like trading. I tra like trading, taking trades off my exponentials and uh, and just horizontal support and resistance. That's really the bread and butter of my game. And I can't and I can't stress enough how much uh, how much how important it is to simplify. I will consult with the uh, with the Stokes every once in a while. And uh, and more importantly, I will, co will consult with my jewel down around here because this this actually is the best indicator that I know of that or that I've ever used. Um, it just gets things. It just gets things right, and it's just it's just 
it's it's weird. I don't understand why, but it does. Um, anyways, uh, 3450 would be the measure move on this guy over here. But again, like I said, you know, if it's going to come all the way down around here, you probably do get a bounce of this level. You know, you do have some nice uh, so, uh, some nice support. It looks like, um, but overall, the destination very very likely coming back down to the 3200 level right over here, uh, just as we showed um, initially on this guy. Uh, following up the GBDC example, something like this would kind of make sense where you're essentially just, well, what are you doing? Or maybe it's something a little bit more like this. You're essentially just making another lower high. Um, as long as as long as you are below this guy right over here, 4,200, 4,250, 40, 40, you're just making another lower high. And that's really all that it, that, uh, the, uh, that it comes down to. Doesn't mean that Bitcoin can't get it back above it, but again, simplify. The trend has been your friend for the last year. All you've had to do, and not, not not you, I mean, obviously there's a lot of people tuning into content like this are short and have been short just like I have for the majority of the year. Um, but, uh, you know, all, all you had to really do was just get short and uh, and wait, just like all of the just like all of the hashtag honorable hodlers, BTF Dean for the past three years. And this segment over here, when you're in a bull trend, well, all you have to do is wait over there as well. Is it the best trading strategy in, in that in that? No, but it's actually not bad. And just just like uh, STFR right over here. It's not that I mean, it's not the best one. You might be waiting for a while, but you're on the side of the trend at the very least. Um, so uh, so over leveraged traders beware but uh but you know overall that's kind of what i see right over here um so that also does line up this 3200 this 3250 area right here is extremely important extremely extremely important why because going back on over here to our uh, our longer term time frame chart on the bit stamps um that that uh, that area is not only just kind of right above our current low. Whoops, not 11, but 200. Um, but that also does line up, or or is going to be lining up with the red 200 simple moving average on the weekly. So again, I never like to be short coming off of that um, until we actually break it. Uh, this is just likely to be the range for me. Uh, the purple 200 exponential and the red 200 simple moving average until we re until we break it either which way. I, it's just going to be ranging action. If you break, if you both open and close a, a weekly dildo above the 200 exponential moving average, I actually would drastically, uh, I would still have to be a little bit bearish because you're still below 6,000, but I'd drastically change my tune and I'd probably even start taking some longs the first time in a very long time, like legitimate longs um, on my main account. I should I should also uh, clarify. Um, this red 200 simple moving average right over here, same, same, same thing. While I am overall bearish, while I am looking for lower lows, it's not until Bitcoin actually breaks that where it's appropriate to actually be taking those trades just like you know insert very famous uh semi <laughs> never mind <laughs> never mind i won't even go on to it but insert insert famous analysts right over here you know taking a short at this at this portion right over here that's you know i see the same thing it's bearish yes i am bearish but you're going to be waiting like a month or a month and a half two months for it to actually play out so you don't want to be stuck in the same thing right over here this is likely to become another muddy territory the 200 simple is very 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 strong just in general for general markets this is also a nice horizontal level to begin with as we saw um plotting it out on our, on our other chart and um and, and and again, you know, it's not until you actually break this area where I can become like directional, positional, bearish. And where would I look for if that were to happen? Again, if that were to happen, which I actually do believe it's going to happen, I'd be looking towards the 886 Fibonacci retracement down around here. That's actually where Bitcoin did bottom out um, in 2014, down around there. Uh, this this area does encompass between about 2300 to 2600 right over here, which does line up with some nice horizontal historical levels. And if we put on the volume profile, it should agree with some nice high volume nodes coming right over here actually even bigger than what you did at, at the um at the six thousand level and if we go to the blx index and put on the monthly um we should be able to see because i've done this a million fucking times um uh we should be able to see yes the 100 exponential coming in right around where right around 2400 as well so i do like that also because this would potentially be operating within you know a um a descending triangle as we're as we currently see it um 
we could make a much move off this, right? So let's actually just let's actually just do this one out, something like that. Again, I don't want to do the full on one. And if we pull it out, where does this guy point around? This is this is highly unscientific. What I just did, uh, yeah, right around twenty three fifty. So again, kind of rounding out the lower portion of that blue box uh, territory as well. So a lot of things point around this area. Um, that would be the next big area that I look for for a str extremely strong bounce and potential reversal. Now, of course, Bitcoin can go lower. Um, I don't really see anyone talking about this eighteen fifty area right over here. But maybe now that I talk about it, hopefully, hopefully, like no one's actually watching my videos. Um, but uh, this one's actually of big interest to me. Um, now, of course, I'll never say that Bitcoin's definitely going to go down to this level or, or even this level down around here, like the permit, like the super bears will, because I can see that there are that uh, that there are legitimate, you know, potential bottoming areas beforehand. This this area being of of major interest right here. But if this area does break, then yes, eighteen fifty is actually really on the forefront of my mind. Um, and if that area breaks in, yeah, then, uh, then I'll, then I'll join the perma bear saying, you know, the nine, four, two Fibonacci retracement down around here, right around 1100 or 1300 is kind of where it's likely to go towards. Um, we do have some nice horizontal support trend lines, uh, and also some, some extremely high volume profile, uh, action being done around there, actually even a little bit lower, right at about a thousand even. Um, uh, but this also would line up with, why isn't this not scrolling? Can I not scroll it anymore? I guess we have to go to the weekly. This would also line up with the uh, the prior high. If, if Bitcoin were to get all the way down around there, around that like 1100 or 1200 area, which again, I'm not saying that's going to that, you know, it's got to chew through a few areas, a few major areas first, I should say. Um, but uh, it, it would kind of line up with your prior high of your former market cycle, which it's kind of like an unspoken rule that the that the prior highs become the become like the new lows of your next market cycle. Anyways, um, when it comes down to it, you know, I, I think I think that there's a lot of people looking for this area right over here. There's a few there, there's a lot of outspoken analysts who, you know, <laughs> whenever they get something right, they'll fucking be yelling in your ear. And whenever they get some wrong, well, you don't hear anything about it or it was manipulation. So uh, so they're talking about that. Um, and that kind of usually when, when when a lot of people are looking at an area like that, uh, it will either get front run or you get, you know, a or, or you get a wick below, like a very violent wick below. So. If it gets front ran, I'd be certainly looking at this 1850 area right over here. If it gets a violent wick below, uh, don't even don't don't even fucking bother. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to talk about the three things that I'm looking for for Bitcoin to basically get me out of bear market mode. We talked about them a little bit earlier, but basically I want to see a higher high on the daily. We haven't done that. I mean, we haven't we haven't had an uptrend on the daily for the last over a year, so that would be a good start. But that's not necessarily the most important things. I want to see the weekly, more importantly, open and close a a weekly total, both open and close above the purple 200 exponential moving average right over here, um, above 4150. That would be extremely impressive and really drastically change. And like I said, I'd probably take a little bit longs after that um and then the third and final and most important and the no like blindfolded i would, I would accept it uh if bitcoin can get back above the area of breakdown leading us into this uh more aggressive downtrend right around six thousand, that would be extremely impressive to me as well and i'd be looking for some long-term longs off that um, of course we are nowhere near that area and there's a lot of resistance on the overhead above and the really difficult thing about a bear market is that when you're in the bear market um you know bears can attack at any time because they have the prerogative too. They have, you know, that is what essentially a bear market is, right? Uh, so rallies will fail. And, you know, even if you do get breakouts, even if you get everyone screaming about an inverted head and shoulders and it even does break out, a lot of the times those will fail as we just saw the, uh, the example on this run over here to about 8,300 or, or whatever it was. So again, keep these things in mind um, because you, uh, I mean, I can't, I can't stress enough to to let go of the noise in the market and and just focus on the big things which have not changed at all. It doesn't mean that they can't change, but again, fighting the trend is, is you don't have to make the trend your enemy. In fact, it's the worst enemy to have because he's got like fucking knives and guns and also bazookas, bear zookas, I should say, right now in the in the in the current context of this market. So be fucking careful. If you make friends with the bear zooka, well, then you can ride red dildos all the way down and fuck all these bullish, ignorant, fucking obnoxious assholes on crypto Twitter and uh, and trading view and all these great social media venues. But <laughs> before I piss anyone else off, um, again, I will be a bull when it's time to be a bull. But for now, it's still it's still a bear and uh, still looking for lower lows. Although to be very, very clear on that, you know, I don't think I don't think we're breaking 3200 anytime soon. I think this is going to take quite some time. In fact, if we go back on over here, um, 
yeah, if we go back on over here and kind of make it a, a relation between the 2014 and even the 2013 uh, mark cycle and the 2018 mark cycle, the one that we're playing out right now, this first diagonal trend line that you're looking at, that holds in the the first consolidation that leads you into your bull trap of that mark cycle, just like over here, you know, you consolidate, you break it out, we put in the bull trap, the exact area, the area that we kind of denoted before, and then you fall off on that. But after you fall off on the, or sorry, after you fail this guy right over here, after you get bull trapped, you actually never break this this uh, declining trend line once again. Um, in fact, you base off of it once right over here and then base off of it again right over here. Um, uh, putting in your final low. So perhaps we could come up with a timing on this, uh, depending upon where it actually does hit this guy, but we have based off of it once over here, it has held it up along with the 200 simple moon average. So I really do like that for good confluence with each other. Um, but perhaps it does, uh, perhaps it does, you know, come all the way down around here to this area that I'm speaking on that would have a time frame somewhere in middle of February. So again, you know, it's, it's probably going to chew through some time, another month and a half. If we were to come all the way down to 1850 that, you know, that could suggest a time of, of mid April, and if it really did go all the way down to 1100 or 1300 down around here, that could be all the way until July of this year. Um, again, time analysis, not something that I think is really like appropriate to be done in this way. Not something that I've really seen being been able to be done, you know, realistically in a, in a more professional sense, just mainly people postulating ideas and doing a little bit of mental masturbation, which is fun, which is good. And I do like masturbating mentally uh, with you guys. But is that, you know, is that what I'm, you know, basically basing trades off of no no not at all uh, this is just fun fun shit to look at and to uh and to talk shit about when the market's kind of slow right now um anyways so i will talk uh briefly again right now um about i won't get into the matrix i'll save that for tomorrow but i'll get uh, i'll briefly talk about why i do not believe bitcoin's bottomed and we'll go through a few examples but basically First things first, as far as bottoms go, this this volume down around here, I think best seen on a weekly, is not fucking good enough. This area that we're doing right over here looks a very similar to what you did right over here in 2014. Look at the volume characteristics in relation to what you did in your parabolic cycle right over there. It is less, but it, it does stand out. Everyone thought that this was a bottom right over here. Everyone got super long. Everyone was screaming about it on crypto Twitter. I bought the low. I'm ne It's never going lower, and I'm going to be rich, and I don't have to do shit, mom. So you better get off your lazy ass and cook me those chicken tendies. You dumb, lazy bitch. Just kidding. If you're listening, mom, I apologize. Um, but, you know, same thing right over here. Uh, everyone's kind of rattling once again. What I'm really looking for is volume similar to what you did in your parabolic cycle right over here. Something similar. It doesn't need to be exactly there, but it needs to be similar. Um, because remember, these are measured in coins traded, not dollars traded. So if it's measured in coins traded, this this is drastically higher than this right over here in terms of dollar. In fact, if we if we bring up the dollar uh, valuation, you're going to notice very, very quickly that it is nowhere fucking near. And in fact, just as an aside, I mean, this massive spike or what looks like a massive spike right over here, that's all red. And you make lows below it on top of that. That's not it's that's continuation as in the most fucking basic of basic senses. Uh, anyways, uh, this is represented in dollar valuation right over here. This is what you did in December of, uh, of 2017. So two years ago now, holy shit, time is flying. Uh, welcome to 2019. I'm from the future or the past. If you're, if you're viewing this in the in like the future future, if you're an alien, welcome. And let, please do let me know. Is magic internet money even good? <laughs> Just kidding. I actually do believe in Bitcoin long term. I've been talking about a lot of bearish ideas, but I do believe in Bitcoin long term. But you, as you can see right over here, it, it's nowhere fucking near, man. Nowhere near. Um, so again, when the actual bottom does get put in, you're going to see some sort of a big institution, some sort of a big, uh, big boy, someone with deep pockets buy up so much fucking Bitcoin, you're, you're going to see this thing move, you know, an, extre an, ex an, ex an extremely rapid way. You're not going to get multiple chances to buy the low. In fact, going on to a daily right over here, you get one, two, three, four chances to buy within about two and a half percent. We measured it out last night of the low. That is way too generous as far as markets go in my experience. So looking at this guy right over here, I'd say that's extremely unlikely, uh, not just extremely unlikely, but is <laughs> very, very unlikely to be the quite very unlikely to be the case. Uh, as far as capitulation goes, you actually do have a couple of good examples in uh, of of this past year. These were not obviously the market cycle lows, but this this is what it can look like in one day. In one fucking day, you went up forty percent, over forty percent on this guy right over here. Um, on this guy, on this stab down over here, you went up literally, yeah, again another like thirty five to forty percent. Within three weeks, literally three weeks for Bitcoin right over here, it is it is uh, sustained about twenty about twenty two percent. 
not fucking good enough. And of course, if you want more examples, go to the long-term analysis playlist. And that's going to do it for you. Um, I want to keep this video a little bit shorter because I want to go and eat a shit ton of food soon. <laughs> um, uh, Saturdays, is, I, I go to a buffet and I just eat everything. And like Finnish people, they don't know what Americans are. So they don't know that that buffets can be absolutely fucking destroyed by by one hungry person. Anyways, uh, okay, so we talked enough about Bitcoin. Let's go check on Buterol. He's been the leader of the market and uh, in the canary in the coal mine. So let's see how he's doing over here. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so we spoke about this yesterday. Uh, Buterol. Uh, we caught this move right over here, jumping back down to the 150, 151-ish uh, area, and then rallied off that. So not bad. And looking like, looking like this actually might be the breakout. This actually might, this actually might be the breakout. But again, no breakout volume just yet. This is very suspect down around here. You still see the falling volume, so I don't like that. Going to be printing. I'm going to guess some some nice bearish divergence. Yeah, you are printing bearish divergence on this. So there is there there is kind of like a time frame on this. There, uh, there certainly is a time frame on the on this as not only not only is this you know is this breakout very very lackluster. This is not a breakout right now as it stands, um, as far as volume goes. Um, but also, you know, it's event driven. So event driven shit typically sells off, you know, either either a couple of days beforehand or, you know, the day of or, or, or a couple of days afterwards. Um, so I forget what day the event is, but uh, but overall be aware of this, you know, you typically speaking event event mentality event psychology is all the same you know it's it's you you ha you now have a reason for rallying so the so the bigger accounts the market movers they know this they know how to manipulate emotions they don't necessarily manipulate a price but they manipulate emotions what they actually do well of and you know that's actually going to be a new talking point for myself uh they, they manipulate emotions which is what people have a very difficult time dealing with because people are typically emotional you know emotional beings right um and you know to to a fault in a lot of cases um you know people would and people love to like blame right so you blame someone else for your emotions and not understanding that you are responsible for your own emotions to begin with ah cute key, key right over there which maybe we can get into in, into that some other time anyways uh i would still be going off this guy right over here 159 and a half as long as this one holds you know you can re I respect it. I respect it, but it's you're not getting what you want to see as far as breakouts go. So it certainly is in question already. Bearish divergence, as as we saw on our uh, on our four hour four hour Stokes, look to be snaking around as well. Kind of inconclusive. Um, four hour DMI is giving a long signal, so fair enough. Um, but. Yeah, if this thing does take another leg up, I don't see much stopping it from about 173. Uh, kind of this block right over here between 170, 170. What is this? 170. Stop moving. Uh, <laughs> 173, 174 to uh, to to 180ish area. Uh, Mr. Buterol is bearish to me as long. As, I mean, actually, you know what? Mr. Buterol has done something different, but because it is event driven, I don't really want to put too much weight on it. Um, as also just getting to the 6.8 Fibonacci retracement right now, just saying. So a lot of resistance in this area. Uh, it's got it's got to prove itself, just like everything else. Got to prove itself. I need to move this back, get this guy back. Uh, proving itself like in a no bars hold way would be getting back above 2.14 on Finex. Um, so yeah, for now it there's. There's, there's certainly warning signals, but price action is price action, and uh, you can't argue with this just yet. If you break 159 and a half, then yes, um, you know you do have supports along the way, but I do believe that this thing would be coming back down to about 144 and a half, something like that, um, over over time. Again, this you know it's probably not gonna happen today, or maybe it does happen today. I mean, it is a weekend. Typically, you don't get like moves out of ranges on a weekend, uh, but yeah, you want to, again, you want to see major volume on this, and you're just not getting it right now. Um, let's go check out uh, XRP. What's XRP doing? Um, nothing. Get basically going extremely sideways. And again, XRP is very, very simple to me um, in the way to actually look at it from an analysis perspective. Uh, as long as you have the, the three-day dodo death cross and as long as you're below the yellow 21 exponential, I play it to the downside. Um, looking for it to probably come back down to about 28 cents. But here's the thing, man. You know, XRP can look as you know can look as good or as bad as it can. And, but you know, whatever Bitcoin does is going to follow it. You know, they play follow the leader. And right now, the leader is actually Mr. Buterol, so he gets to dictate the pace. Um, and uh, and it's kind of like a race against time for this event, right? Because it's probably going to you know it's going to either sell off a few days before, a few days after, something like that. 
So you got to do you got to do the work beforehand. Again, um, be aware of these sorts of things. I forgot to check out the MVT signal, but just kind of rounding out the discussion of why I don't believe the lows are in. Uh, MVT signal right over here, um, which is called every top and every bottom in, in Bitcoin's market cycle history perfectly. Uh, typically bottoms where my curse currently is now or lower. And as you can see, we are well above that area, suggesting that, that there is more room to go to the downside. Let's go check out longs and shorts. Uh, longs, longs on the table, we got 33 and a half thousand longs versus 31 and a half thousand open shorts. Uh, longs are paying uh, five times the interest rate that shorts are, but neither, I mean, that's not high to begin with. This is this is nothing, but th this is not high to begin with. Uh, anyways, uh, shorts hedged are about four and a half thousand. So we really have about 27 and a half thousand open shorts versus 30, 33 and a half thousand open longs. That's not fucking good either. You don't want, you don't, you really don't want over 30,000 longs as long as you're below 4,000 in price action. Um, so again, people will be squeezable if price action does move. And with that event coming up and potential catalyst for, you know, a move, uh, it doesn't bode well, but it doesn't mean that you can't have a nice, a nice move up into the 4,100s. If the, uh, if our lower time frame uh, pattern does get, uh, does get resolved to the upside, uh, going back on over here to the four. So I can wrap up this video or actually, sorry, we should go over and check out traditional markets cause they did close yesterday. Um, 252. Okay. So this is exactly what I was talking about on traditional markets. And, and you'll notice a lot of similarities between this and Bitcoin, right? You put in a reversal pattern right over here. You hit all the measure moves. I mean, just put it, I mean, we had this in, we had this in here for, you know, months and months beforehand, uh, coming all the way down to where your 200 simple moving average and rallying off there. And it's the same sort of thing. I don't want to, while I am overall bearish on this thing, while I do think that it makes some lower lows, it's probably going to take a long time. And as long as you're above this guy right over here, two, 238 and a half above that 200 exponential, I don't want anything to do with, with directional short positions in fact i uh, as i've been saying i am looking for some up movements and we are actually hitting this this first area rather quickly um uh also meeting up with your 21 exponential right around here so probably bounce off of it off of it on the first pass but uh some you know i i, I one of these areas right here is likely going to be the next big trade whether it's you know 257 or 260 ish area um, those are kind of the next big areas to be looking for monthly 21 exponential should be coming in right around, uh, 260. So that's my, tr that would be my traditional area. Um, and yeah, I do think that it comes down in this area at some point, but it's going to take a long, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a long time, probably longer than Bitcoin takes to play out its uh, market cycle. Speaking of Bitcoin, um, CMEs on Friday closed at 3,800 even. So that will be of interest coming into the next trading week on, or sorry, on uh, Sunday at 8 PM Eastern time, but still being held back by this, uh, man, nice little move up here but still being held by this uh, 200 simple on the hourly. So again, an, a, a trading range and you do have a gap to the downside right over here. Uh, not really much to make out uh, uh, off of this, but that will be a magnet for price action coming in to open on, uh, on Sunday. Okay, back on a Bitcoin to wrap up the lower time frames once again. Um, don't, need to make, don't need to make it any more complicated than, than, uh, than this right here. Working on the same sort of triangle, if you break it out to the upside above 3,900, don't see much stopping you from about 4,150 to 4,100 to 4,200 in that kind of range right over there. Again, always being care careful and cautious with longs. Um, to the downside, if this does break out to the downside, uh, 3,450 right over here is where the measurement would be pointing towards and then probably just you know go all the way back down for the full retrace. Um, again, though, I am fully, I'm fully hedged up. I'm fully, you know, fully neutral essentially, and not really looking to have, not really looking to have a position until we actually break this out. Cause I do believe that it will be breaking out pretty damn soon. Probably not today. Cause it's, you know, it's a Saturday and typically you don't get big moves on a Saturday, just like, you know, wiki wicks here and there. So good luck trading the 10 minute on a Saturday, but, uh, but you know, probably Sunday when, when Asia wakes up and they say, Oh, hello, freeze. Maybe we have a dog today. And then they say, all right, sell all the Bitcoins, bitch. And uh, then you finally get your move. So, um, or, or buy all your Bitcoins as well. Could be, could be that as well. Anyways, uh, anyways, that's all I'm doing right now. Just waiting for this area. Sorry, again, 37, uh, 3,700 will call up uh, to the downside and 3,900 to the upside. Whichever one happens first, that's the side that I'm going with. And that's going to do it for this morning. Hope this one finds you well. Hope you're having the best Saturday possible. I'm going to be signing off now. I've been going to be taking a little bit of a, uh, of a relaxed day myself. Look forward to seeing you guys soon. As always, hit me up in the Discord if you want to chat it out. Um, I'll be intermittently in and out. So uh, I think that does it for now. All right, guys, take care and see you guys soon.